guys, here we are back at the St. Petersburg job where we have rebuilt the jams in an archetypal assembly, but we've yet to put the window stops on. They're a custom window stop, so one of the things that we're gonna that a good window stop is gonna do is it's gonna mask the transition between this, the jam here, and this, the casing. Now Casing itself is important because that's what helps align the jam and keep it straight. When you put that molding over this, you know, it just kind of blends it all in. It makes it look really, really nice. So we're going to do that. But we've also got the, what do you call those things? Little grommets, those uh, window stop bead adjusters that we're going to put four of them in here so that you can move the stops in and out and you can take them out at will and stuff like that. So getting it all ready so that we can clear coat it. So, and that measurement there Let's see I'm gonna make them two and a quarter just right there see that two and a quarter should work pretty good and that'll cover that little gap there and make everything really nice so here I am outside my setup I've got my chop saw and my table saw and I've got some nice strips here that we milled up at the shop in advance you know i've got these are nice select cypress stops here and i've also got some really just pretty much matching heart pine uh stops milled up here and i've got to put a, a round over edge on these but i got to cut them to size too so all right so Typical, what is this thing? This is like a trim router. It's got a little round over bit there. That's all this requires. So I'm gonna take and put an edge on one of these and a couple of these and try it out. Long point. I'm gonna try it and see. Right. But before I make that cut, I'm gonna go check my measurement. Yeah, so 56 and three quarters is my number. And I'm gonna use this piece as a template for where I put my window stop adjusters, right? So. But I also want to show you this, you know, 
These are original window stops that were on the, you know, on the main original windows that we stripped, you know? When we stripped these, I guess these are old hinge mortises for original shutters that were on there once and taken off. See that? It's just filled, who knows what that is, but it, you can see the old screw holes where the, the screws would have gone through. So this was on W4. I guess it's one of these here. So anyway, that's what's going on there. This is a 56 end quarters. Yep. have to be exactly dead nuts particular as to getting these things lined up. I mean, you could, right? But I don't know that it makes a big deal. So I'm just going to pick the number here. Two and a quarter. So inch and an eighth. That's where the hole goes. Inch and an eighth. Let me just check. Can do it. Three quarter or so. There we go. Just center. This is two and a quarter. Little bit here. Oh, there's my half inch. So I'm gonna do a test run here and make sure that. These are these uh, window stop beat adjusters. Oh yeah, nice tight fit. Okay, now look. So they have a an elongated hole in there that goes side to side. All right. The uninitiated, they might just put them in at these random whatevers, you know. But you have to make sure you're putting them in side to side like that. Okay. See how that works. Okay. Excellent. Okay, there's that. Oh, so nice. 
So that's one. Let's go see how she fits, huh? Alright, let's see if this can work. Oh man, look at that. Oh, so nice. Beautiful, it says. Oh, but you know what? That parting bead is in the way here, huh? So I'm not getting it. It's not fitting exactly. Hmm. We have one of those handy dandy jack saws with teeth. We got one with teeth, right? With teeth. All right. Got teeth on there. I told you about my last one. Yeah. You know, my helpers, I went to pick it up, it had no teeth left. <laughs> well, those aren't made for uh, screws. Right, they're not made to cut screws. It fits pretty good up and down. Um, let me uh, pull this sash out. I'm going to adjust the window meeting rail here. Okay, let's see. It's just a little bit. Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. What's so great about these pull saws? Japanese pull saws. It's really easy to take just a hair off. And they're so, so sharp. You know? one of these? Yes. They will cut you? Yes. They will. And it's very memorable. It's not like a knife. No. No, it's like a grabbing cut. Uh-huh. Watch. There we go. Oh, that guy fits real nice. Okay. So then, this guy in here like that. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so queso, where's that cheesy thing? Oh, that cheesy drill, queso? <laughs> Get it. All right, so. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the screw here, right in the middle. Okay, I think it's important. Right, so it's really, really important that no matter what drill you put those drywall screws in, you always finish it off with one of these and make sure you get that on camera so that everybody knows how cool you are, right? Um, because, you know, everybody has one of these, but who uses one of these? You know, you don't have to show them that you pre-drilled, screwed, you got anything started with an electric drill, battery drill, but as long as you're finishing it with this, showing everybody this, the thing, you know, you're all old school. So, it's all about illusion. Oh, well, then let's uh, take that out of the way. Yeah, we get, yeah, get that out of the way out of the shot. <laughs> all right? So, my magic bag opener here, slash pencil. Alright, so this is going to go in, right? Oh yeah, baby. Oh no, look. Is it too wide? Oh, it doesn't fit. Oh, dang. Hmm. Okay. How am I supposed to handle that? Huh. Guess you're going to have to go with new school screwdriver. No way. Let me see here. So, Me too. <laughs> so Scott coming in to save the day with the flathead screwdriver that does work. So we're gonna put that in here now. Okay. Boom. Oh, look, oh, it's, it's got ratchet action too. 
man. Oh, that's so nice when that happens. Oh. Dang it. Me? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's see what we're gonna do now. Um, maybe drill the hole? Oh! So the screw that we started with doesn't work. Let's try this one here, though. All right, so. Okay. Hmm. So, hopefully, you, my audience, is learning about brass screws, you know, because you have to know about brass screws, right? Because I should have known that was going to happen. Gosh, is this the right size? I don't know. It's starting to feel pretty, pretty wrong. Let's see. Oh, don't tell me I broke too. Gosh. Wah, wah, wah. Wow. Huh. Well. Guess we're gonna need a bigger drill bit. It's nice and shiny in there. Hmm. Okay. These guys in. Oh, oh. Every once in a while, you're saved. But just because this screw comes out doesn't mean the other one will. Boy. People always ask, Steve, how did you get so good at what you do? <laughs> By making dumb mistakes like this. You know? See? Brass is really, really soft. How do you know if it's brass? Well, Number one, it's not magnetic, and two, it breaks. So, come on. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try this again. So here we go. We've got a bigger drill bit. You know what I'm gonna try? I'm gonna try putting a screw in with that drill bit. And if I got that doesn't work, I got an even bigger drill bit. It looks like it. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be the right size. So we'll see. One of these days, we're gonna figure out how to put in a screw. Oh yeah, there you go. That still feels really freaking tight. Hmm. I don't know, man. Hold on. I'm gonna back that guy out. What? I like that guy. Nah. I'm not liking it. So we're gonna call this video how to fit a freaking screw. Nice. That's what we'll call it. It's gonna do one. And eventually, that might be the size. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's it. Third time. Finally. Let's see. Four different drill bits. Three different screwdrivers. Two broken screws. A pair of Rolling pliers, whatever. Now we're gonna be two screws short. Hmm. Yeah, that's true.
All right, so let's try this again. Okay. I know this is going to go in here now. Boom. Okay. Come on. That's the what, that's what we were hoping for at first. But you know, here at Wood Window Vancouver, we are very realistic about the life of window craft. Isn't that nice? There you go. In there like that. Okay. That's a smart thing, I think. Well, you want to wait till you got the real windows in there? Or? Hmm. Well, they're adjustable. You know. Okay. Scott's referring to the fact that we made new sashes for these instead of using these existing ones because stripping them is like, ooh. and then a lot of them were rotted anyway. So like this one here is rotted, see? Boom. And they don't match the rest of the house. And they don't match the rest of the house, but now they do. Because that's what we do. This is window craft, not window crap. Like so many others are engaged in. Now, if you want a window crap, you know what you do is you go to the home store and you find you buy some window crap and you slap it in your house without regard to how your house is even built. So that's what you do. Oh, but you know what? I got property rights and you can't tell me what to do with my house. That's right, I can't. But I can judge you. <laughs> anyway. I don't judge. No judgment here.
more stuff. Cool. Sand these edges real quick because got the sand. Make some little planer marks. Spikies, little spikies are like keeping aligned. Technical term there, spikies. Spikies, I yeah. I think I looked up in the dictionary. Wrapping it up now, and it's coming out pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Stop here. That one's got to go on. Scott's. It's attaching these top pieces. I guess that's how you make a custom stop, huh? Well, how you do it. So, boom. That's beautiful, man. Just clear coat that. Simple sand it and clear coat is going to be nice. Excellent. And that third nail loose just in case. Excellent. 